Uh, here's a little bit of housekeeping. If you want to follow along, um, we, uh, I don't have credits today, uh, but I have discussed this with my business team and, and can, uh, um, can pass credits back to you after, after the, um, uh, the, um, the conference. So if you're participating and you want more uh, detail uh, or you want to you want to follow along, uh, let me know and uh, you can follow along in your own own account and I can provide you with a, a modest amount of credit uh, for for running a couple of instances for a short period of time and figuring out what it's like. Or uh, I understand that not everybody has um, access to cloud accounts. So if you uh, would like, I can uh, help you out with some credits today on, on the 18th um, to make it very clear, 18th of February 2021 um, for uh, the duration of the conference and uh, help, help you uh, uh, get started, see what that looks like. Um, it's faster to just use your own account and then let me know that you're um, that you're intro, you know, you've participated in the workshop and then we'll, we can uh, go from there. So I'll also apologize. I'm, I'm in, uh, uh, so I'm here in Austin, Texas, um, and, uh, not, not closer to you, but it looks like a lot of the, uh, the check weather has come this way. And, uh, you may have read about the inclement weather and the problems that we've had. So if I suddenly disappear from the screen, it's because uh, we're having intermittent power outages. Um, knock on wood, that won't happen today. Cool. So uh, I started putting this together uh, this, as a workshop because um, I want to know about uh, the um, uh, the the use of Fedora Core S and, you know, super exciting to me to, to understand a little bit better uh, the immutable operating system. Uh, unlike everybody else, I'm not, a, I'm not a, a, a daily developer. I am a solutions architect who works on looking at value stream, value stream mapping and uh, participating in uh, discussions around quality of information and making sure that we have a good, uh, product line and and customers have an understanding of how they're going to uh, pull things to plumb things together that more advanced uh, technologists um, have built to ensure that we have uh, you know they have um, uh, strong solutions for uh, for their their business models and their their requirements and I put this together uh, so that. Uh, we could explore those basic steps together. I don't want to say that I am an expert and I'm not saying that um, the people that I am teaching this to are uh, less knowledgeable about it than I am. So I'm no Colin Walters and not a Dusty Mabe. I'm a guy who was working really hard to see how much of this I could put together in a workshop and deliver out to you today as someone who wants to know more. So, <clears throat> um, there's uh, another thing that I think is really important is that, um, uh, and I think I'm trying to take these words right out of Matthew Miller's mouth, which is that as uh, members of the Fedora community, I think one of the things that we have a strong responsibility for is building is building solutions, and not just not just resting on the laurels of having uh, um, the sort of the day-to-day -day operations of building uh, uh, Fedora as a distribution. Um, and Core OS really talk, I think, really speaks to that as a, um, as a directive. Um, Fedora Core OS is um, really a mature offering today uh, and has a history, a long history um, from Atomic and uh, lots of other projects that um, uh, were associated with that and, and um, and you know is fed a lot by the experience the desktop experience that we have with silver blue but i think that this is a, a really important thing for us to all as we get in get an understanding of and recognize that 
these are instances that we want to build and destroy as quickly as possible. And that's a little bit about why me, right? So why why am I the one who's who's uh, who's doing this? Well, I need more understanding, a better a better relationship with the operating system and the people who are building this operating system, and the people who are using it. So uh, I wanted to take an opportunity to to uh, deliver some content that was related to that. So <clears throat> um, not knowing a whole lot about uh, what an immutable OS does, I thought maybe the thing that we could do is talk about where it comes from and, and uh, the experience that um, we expect to have, right? So first off, um, the uh, Fedora Core OS provides a series of streams, a next, a testing, and a stable. Um, the URI for uh, the stable uh, configuration in this, well, streams. So building a, uh, a pipeline, building sort of a, a just a, 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 a continuous process around um, the immutable OS and in any kind of container-based workload, it's really important to be able to um, stand up and destroy uh, everything that you have in a in a relatively short fashion, and um, that's made quite possible by uh, having a, a fast way to determine exactly what it is that you want to deploy. Um, if you're building in in uh, in a a way that leverages tags. Um, <clears throat> it's super easy to uh, build out a way to, um, to to collect that information. And so I wanted to take this opportunity uh, for the people who are um, as, as uh, inexperienced as this as, as possible to have, a, have an, um, an opportunity to learn about this. So I started off with <clears throat> just just looking at the uh, the images, how those images are are um, are defined and and um, and how they're uh, provided. So I'm gonna just quickly try and share something different. Um, So let's let's look at um, let's look at that string. I think I'm I think I'm sharing that. Yes. Okay. Good. So, just looking at the content that's out there, um, let's. I think I've got a pretty good history here. So if I want to, um, if I want to look at information that's associated uh, with the architecture itself, just to see, you know, how thick this is, um, I can look at uh, the top of the stream. to show that um, we're not just talking about one location. Um, the team that is responsible for building this, the Core OS team, the Fedora Core OS team, um, builds images across many different uh, platforms in many different environments. And so those are all, um, uh, those are all uh, easy to get to. And there is quite a bit of, of detail here. So, uh, the first thing I was looking at is in the exercises in, I think I'm just going to share that whole screen. So in terms of the exercises, um, I wanted to look at uh, what it is that we could see from just that one URI. Uh, so from one URI, we know that we have 
a stable, a stable, and a next, and a um, <clears throat> yeah, and uh, so stable and next and uh, testing. So um, we can just easily interchange uh, what it is that we want to get. And something that I thought was very interesting about this is that if I decided uh, that I wanted to pull, pull this information into uh, a variable, I could look at uh, my release and I can use tools like uh, JQ um, integrated with the, um, the output from this, uh, this curl from the stream. Uh, <clears throat> to get a uh, to get more detail around the um, uh, the output. So, what can I do with this release information? Uh, well, first, I can I can just uh, echo it, and I can get back the uh, uh, the result. So, looking at that, oh look. You know, here's here's my current next release, right? So most recently uh, built on uh, looks like February seventeenth, and um, so just just uh, yesterday, and then <clears throat> because I know I want to use that information in AWS. Uh, because that's where I live most of my daily life. I can take that information and translate that. So if you didn't see that, I took that release in, that release detail and added it into uh, a filter configuration. So <clears throat> so here I am. With the uh, with the first this first exercise, uh, looking at how I can do this with um, with the release information to pull detail uh, directly from the AWS API. So, <clears throat> if uh, let me let me just quickly say you know. I, I would love it if you have the opportunity to do these exercises with me and you may be able to, um, even if you can't follow along, I'd love to see you be able to um, to take a few minutes and and go through and and uh, go on this thought experiment with me, right? So um, the AWS API calls uh, allow you to, um, to build an instance in uh, AWS. And the, the call that you would use to uh, create an instance is start, start instances. Um, <clears throat> how would you, knowing what you've seen now, uh, put together a, um, a call for that uh, for that cluster. So let's first off, let me follow this link for you and bring that. Um, so now knowing what, what we've put together here, let's go back. I have a describe instances call. I want to know if we have <clears throat> any takers. Okay, hint. I'm just looking for a, a short piece of this. 
because all we have right now is the ability to look at the uh, the artifacts. So <clears throat> inside of my requests, we have this URI. I'm just going to push that into the chat. I did something kind of interesting there, which was I pulled that detail and then I grabbed uh, the images that I knew were associated with the Fedora account. And I did that based on uh, a Red Hat article, knowing how these, the configuration of the accounts works. I know that there is a specific owner. <clears throat> There's an owner for the Red Hat images. There's an owner for the Fedora images. But there's an easier way um, in the uh, in that call. So what I did uh, originally in the release call, I grab the artifacts. <clears throat> but it turns out that if you just look at that information that's available, I should just be able to get it straight from the call. So if I make a curl, I can modify the um, the path, the object path, to get directly to the image for some for any uh, for any location. So if I need the image ID to do a boot or to run an instance, how might I get, go about getting that, um, that image knowing what I know from that, uh, from that request? So, <clears throat> All right, that's going to go super fast. I guess we're we're going to go super fast through the material if, if you don't just guess. That's okay. We can do that. All right, so let's go back and look. <clears throat> Looks like, sure enough, there's more detail here. <clears throat> than you might have thought. So if we look, we can see that just for AWS alone, <clears throat> there's a lot of detail. There's a reason for that, but <clears throat> most importantly, I think here is that we're looking at the images, the official images that are published um, by the Fedora Core OS team. So now I've been able to easily discover using stream information published directly by the Fedora Core OS team, a machine image that I can boot on Amazon uh, EC2 and run a, a Core OS instance. So now, uh, that is all from the one stream. So in this case, stable. But it could have been 
<clears throat> it could have been next. And using detail that I pull from, from here, I could say, you know, I want to I want to do this in Stockholm. So EU Central One. And you can see the special characters here for the for the JSON have to be quoted. <clears throat> oh. That's not enough. Or is it? Yeah, that's enough. Regions. No, it's not. Now we're down to just the release information and the image detail. So there's the image. So if I wanted to run this on uh, on AWS, it would look something like this. Image builder profile. Profile is not important, but it helps me to keep my account straight. Image. And let's look back here. So I have image ID is something that I can build. So now let's just go here. And I can uh, just put that in as a as a dynamic parameter. Let's just add the whole thing in. So now I've got my run instances with the image ID that's specified in this evaluation. Oh. I told <clears throat> I told the uh, the instance, or I told the uh, the streamline where I was going, but I didn't teach the, uh, or I didn't tell the run instances call uh, what region that was in, and so it turned out that was in the wrong spot. That's great. So now, <clears throat> I didn't specify much of anything here, really, to just get an instance running. Um, but the question is, uh, what is this really what I want uh, to be running? And uh, what's inside? That's the important part. So here's an instance ID. That tells me, essentially tells me all this information here that's associated with it, I can describe that. But I don't want to do that. I want I want to say this instance actually has a, a it should have a public IP address, I believe, is associated with it. And I'll need to find that now.
So now I have these instance IDs. Oh. What did I miss? <clears throat> Anybody care to get venture a guess? Did it twice. It's the region information. So look at that. I have an associated host name, a DNS name with the public address. Should be able to just log right in, right? Anything, what do you think might be stopping me from logging in? I mean, I just started the instance. Should be easy as pie, right? Looks like not. <clears throat> Looks like I don't have a route. And it also looks like I don't have, um, I don't have any information for, uh, <coughs> excuse me, the, the, um, the user information. So how do I get that? How would I get, uh, so on a, on a virtual instance or um, really a, any kind of pre-configured virtual machine like this that I'm booting, uh, either in OpenStack or in a standard environment uh, with the vert tools, how would I get a... Um, an instance that, or an image um, equipped with uh, additional information. So at some point, we'd have to be able to inject that information. Um, what's a great tool uh, for doing that in the context of um, any kind of cloud environment? Anybody have a have a guess there? So I'm spoiling it. I'm going to spoil the surprise. It's Cloud Init. Cloud Init is a way that we've done this for many, many, uh, well, for quite a number of years now. Um, and uh, by default has been shipping for a long time. There's interesting things about Cloud and it, uh, it has taken on um, a sort of a saving role for uh, figuring out how to inject information into instances, but then it's also taken on sort of a crippling uh, role in terms of boot time. And so people have long criticized Cloud Init and its uh, just-in-time compile um, <clears throat> and uh, and they they want to um, they want to look at that as a way to move you know as we all want some way to make it to speed it up so speeding up cloud and it uh, was one of the goals of the core OS team and they built a project called ignition and ignition was a way to do this um, in a uh, compiled application environment. So one of the most important parts of building out a configuration either in a standard virtualized environment like on, like on KVM or with the, uh, the QuenU images the <clears throat> uh, is to leverage an ignition file from some location either on uh, as a kernel operator or a kernel parameter or or uh, sorry, either by identifying it on the kernel uh, with a uh, with a with a pointer, or um, or bringing that uh, configuration together for you 
from uh, from some metadata location. Okay. <clears throat> So really the, the thing that uh, brings you from uh, elephants to ants, as um, it's been said in the red hat circles before, thank you, Landon. Um, I found the image, I have all the details. Now what am I gonna do? I need to create a configuration that is going to tell me how what I'm going to boot and what's going to be in that in that boot process, um, and that's the addition file. <clears throat> so, if you're building a core OS image, you need to create um, effectively what is uh, similar to the Cloud Init configuration. And Cloud Init um, and and Cloud Config, which is the uh, YAML equivalent there in, in the cloud init world, you would create uh, that YAML file, base64 encode it and deliver it to um, an Amazon EC2 instance, or you would, uh, as a plain text file, deliver it to, um, I think you base64 encoded in OpenStack too. I, th I think that's right. Um, you had, you were given, given that, uh, you would give it that file and then it would do the work for you. But, but of course, um, with cloud in it, uh, the, you know, the application's not compiled. It's doing the work for you. It's making parsing that, um, with a, with kind of a slow parser, the ammo parsing is, is slow. And then the, the, uh, additional effort is slow. So, uh, and that comes from, so on Amazon EC2, uh, the user data is stored in um, a link at a link local address. Um, so, uh, any idea about what a link local ad, uh, address is? Thanks. So, the link local address ends up being an address that is um, that is not available for any any other. Uh, it's isolated to uh, the single hop from communication point from that, uh, from the instance itself. And we're using that to convert the, or I'm sorry, we're using that to slurp up to the instance what we want it uh, to have in it from that ignition file. And the ignition file starts off as a simple Fedora Core OS configuration file. Um, and then you use a, what's called a transpiler. <laughs> to uh, to create the um, uh, to create the ignition file. <clears throat> so let's uh, you know think about this as an exercise. Uh, the exercise is to build your own core OS configuration file, and then to convert that to JSON for use as an ignition file. And what you're going to get is something that looks like this. You'll start off with this <clears throat> file that um, effectively has the um, uh, the the simple YAML syntax where we're looking at the um, uh, we're looking first off at uh, what we're doing in the past WD uh, for users. We're creating, in this case, a default user of CoreOS, and we're creating an authorized keys, or we're injecting an authorized key into, or pub key into the authorized keys for that user, which means that we'll be able to log in as CoreOS. But let's change that up a little bit. It's easy to write a YAML file. What I'd like you to think about doing is, how do I have a second user? or configure a different user as my primary user in the build process. And then on your own, I'd like you to add that transpiler to the, ins it, to the installation uh, of the instance using Ignition. And then ask yourself some questions. 
So I think we're wrapping up. We've got uh, just a little bit of time for questions. Let's uh, uh, let's start there. Thank you so much, David. There was a question from Pavel in chat about having access to this presentation. I was wondering if you could potentially share it somehow. Yeah, I'll put it on uh, Davdunk, uh, the fedorapeople.org. So I'll I'll add it to my Fedora People um, so that you can get to it. And I'll just stick that in chat right now. Thank you. If anyone else has any questions, please add them to Q&A. I don't see any questions at this point. Do feel free to reach out um, on Discord to David. And apologies for calling you Duncan. That's fa fantastic. <laughs> Sorry for that. <laughs> and uh, Anu Ralph has a question. There's a question in chat. I don't know if you can oh, see it, David. I can. Anu Ralph. I don't, I'm sorry, I don't see your question. I see that I asked. Did I miss, was it closer? I can see it in Q&A, so he's asking. Oh, he's asked again. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Any plans to be able to create CoreOS in cockpit via web, web interface? I don't know, uh, but, I, but I can tell you that, um, that uh, uh, CoreOS with cockpit might be a little bit overboard. So a lot of the things that you'd want to be able to do and demonstrate and configure in cockpit are done uh, through the ignition file. And they're expected to be completed at, at boot. But one of the things that we talked about or that was uh, a big part of this, the concepts here was pipeline. And the pipeline build process is done through that ignition file. So making sure that you have a place to pass the details of that ignition file in a GitOps style um, configuration model is is a big goal. <clears throat> Does that answer the question? Oh, North, yeah, great. Right. 